camping around these bridge pilings. I see a bunch of fish there all along the side of it. See all those fish suspended down? Some of those fish are down 30, 40 foot all down the side of it. Got groups of them up high in like 10 foot of water. Trail around here. See what we see on the other side, but there's a big old water of them down that first side. They're holding in that shade line of the bridge. So these kind of fish, I'll throw a little swim bait, fish head spin, three eighth ounce swim bait. Make a bit of spark shot, something like that. Coming up on the other side of it. There wasn't much on that back side. Same on this front side. Yep, that's where they are. They're on that front side. See, they're in that shade line. We just went into the shade right here. See all those fish out from that bridge. All down through there. Let's see if we can catch one. So when I fish on real clear water fisheries around bridges, I'm looking for um, suspended fish, essentially. So some good tools for fishing for suspended fish, um, drop shot, jigging spoons, um, even little shaky heads can catch them, um, little minnow type profile plastics on a, on a small jig head, um, swim baits and uh, especially like a, like a swim bait or a little small fluke style bait on a fish head spin. So that's kind of what I start with a lot of times on lakes like Table Rock and Beaver Lake and stuff like that. That's real clear water and spotted bass. I'll, I'll often start with an underspin and a small little plastic to see if I can get those fish to react to that. Um, here I'm just, I'm just throwing down the side of a bridge piling um, where I had marked some fish. Um, with a little, uh, I believe it's a zoom fluke um, on a underspin head. So that's a that's a good way to kind of gauge the interest of the fish. Um, just a little quarter ounce, three eighth ounce head, a little small, um, three four inch tail. I think that's a, a four inch mega bass spark shad tail right there. Um, but when I was reeling these fish in off these bridges, they kept spitting up bait and uh, I scooped up one of the bait and started noticing that the bait was actually smaller than the lure I was throwing that they're eating. They were like little two and three inch shad. Um, so I actually picked up a spinning rod with eight pound line, put a little quarter ounce head on it, a little mushroom head and put the three inch spark shad. It's a little tiny swim bait, but it's about the size of those shad that they were eating. Um, not quite as tall in profile, but little bitty bait. Um, for some reason, a lot of those fish will get keyed on a certain size of bait in the summer. You know, you've got your shad that have spawned early and they might only, they might only be one or two inches long but they're down there by the millions. And, and that is what the fish are keyed on. They're keyed that little bitty bait, and there's so much of it down there, they're just running around and scooping and they're, you know, just picking them off one by one. And so I think a small swim bait, even though you've got an abundance of bait fish down there, it actually, especially in clear water, it can be extremely deadly in the summer just because they're so keyed on that, that size forage. But, uh, you know, I would just take and reel that swim bait I got one there and just I would just reel it real slow I'd let it get down where I thought it was 10 15 feet deep and kind of reel you want to stay above them when you fish a swim bait you want to you want to reel the bait above them because they're they're often looking up for bait fish so um, in clear water they can look up and see a, a profile above them so that's what I try to do um, yeah here I tried to swing a three pounder in that was almost a disaster on that little spinning rod and eight pound line but we got them in um, nice quality chunky fish that's the size of the fish that are down there I could tell when I marked them on the bridge that they were just just solid chunks down there there's lots of little fish mixed in it's a nice thing about you know some lakes like Table Rock there's so many fish in it you can actually 
do a lot of practicing and experimenting. You go to lakes that, that you can't get a bite on or they don't have a lot of fish or the fish really aren't keyed up and feeding. It's hard to learn anything. Um, I like when you can go to places where you can where you can catch them abundantly, even if they're small ones, to kind of experiment and play with things. What I don't like is when I get on a bridge like this and I'm fishing finally and, and someone sees me catch one or sees my dad take a picture of me catching one, they think it's okay to go ahead and just come in and sit down right on top of me and start fishing. Um, I scanned all those bridge pilings. There are schools of fish on every single piling. And that's often how it is. I mean, some bridges, will, you know, one piling will be the good piling, but uh, on, in this case, there were three pilings that were just absolutely loaded with fish. And these guys thought they'd come and get right in the middle of my cast here and kind of cut me off. And, I don't know if they were trying to pressure me off the spot, but I fish on the Tennessee River. That's not going to happen very much. So, but anyways, I uh, I kept fishing in the area a little bit. My dad, being the guy that he is, he wants to talk to every stranger he meets. He uh, he struck up a conversation with them, asked them what they'd been fishing with, if they'd had any luck, uh, that kind of mess, and said no, they fished all over the place, couldn't hardly get bit. They caught a few little bitty fish on drop shots, but yeah, that's the that's the case. Somebody told them, oh, you gotta go catch them on drop shots. Well, yeah, if you know how to do that, that's that's good advice. But if you don't, I think you're better off to throw a bait that you can cast and just wind around. You know, maybe that's a spy bait, maybe it's a top water. Those fish were coming up and busting on the surface periodically. They were hard to catch on top water, and I tried doing it for quite a while, but it seemed like I had a small little swim bait, a grub, put a grub on an eighth ounce head or quarter ounce head and just wind it around. My dad caught several fish on a, on a little duo spy bait. Um, it's just a fun way to catch them when they're suspended like that around cover. But, uh, you yeah, know, those guys got to talking about drop shot, and I was like, well, I can catch them on drop shot here. And so I picked up my drop shot rod, and I was watching on the graph, saw one right under my graph, so I reeled up real quick and dropped on them. Drop shot Trying to get them to move back down a little bit. Yeah, he's not reacting to my drop shot at all, going up past him. Going back by him, he's just sitting there. Oh, something looks like it moved in the screen now with it. Shake it a little bit. Raise it up and hold it. Shake it a bit. So it's not a giant, but you know, saw the fish, dropped down on it. You know, I, there was multiple fish down there. I dropped down on one and you know, could be that wasn't a bass or just whatever was in a foul mood wouldn't wouldn't react. So dropped down on it and another one showed up. It was a little fish, ran up there and grabbed my drop shot. So, I mean, you kind of game them, you, you know, raise it up, lower it down, shake it in their face, you know, drop it past them, see if they'll follow, bring it up, see if they'll follow. You just, you're just constantly trying to get them to react to that drop shot bait. And after a while, I had marked so many fish, I wanted to see if I could get some followers on a glide bait. So I threw a, that's a PH Lures, um, w Glide um, bait Wesley Strader helped um, Phil Hunt design. Just a back and forth glide bait, but it was a uh, it was pretty eye opening. I got a few followers to chase it back to the boat, so I decided to hook a camera up to the line. Not the ideal scenario because the camera obviously pulls the bait around, pulls the line around, and it apparently spooks the fish off because I, I had several fish go up there and make a run at the glide bait but I think they got up there and there was a camera near there so it, they just gave up on it but you, know, you could reel it along and let it glide and then you could you know speed up your retrieve and let it and jerk it and let it go off to one side and almost every time you did that there'd be a fish that would show up right back on top of it again it's like they were whenever it would zig 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 and glide off then a fish would come back and, and expect it again so it was pretty cool. You could throw it down the side of the pilings um, and get those fish to follow. I'd see some, you know, kind of shadowing and sharking as they would go to reel it up to the boat and bring it back up to make another cast. I'd see fish, you know, underneath it. 
spots are real funny like that. It's, you know, smallmouth are curious too, but they'll a lot of times just run out there and attack it. Where a spot, they'll just follow it along, just track it and stay with it. They're just curious fish. I always found that interesting. They, they like to just, just, just watch things. <laughs> They're not, uh, they, you know, obviously you can catch them. They, they get aggressive, but it's just, it's just, it's just interesting to me. They'll just swim along with a lure, just curious what it's doing, why it's doing that, without actually always having to attack it. So, but it was that was somewhat eye opening to me to throw a big swim bait on those spotted bass and have them follow to the boat, and then to drop a camera down there and actually see how much fish you're actually fishing through and not getting a bite. It's it's just part of it. And we caught some nice ones. I mean, three pound, four pound spotted bass in the heat of summer. I mean, I'm talking like heat index of 120, you know. I got around those bridge pilings, fishing shade lines. I caught some out in front of docks. It's just a great way to fish this time of year.